Good morning, y'all. Y'all, y'all, yeah. So let me, let, me, let me teach you something real quick, all right? Because I grew up in Georgia, all right? And that's how we talk down there. Just kind of all garbled up, blah, 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 whatever. Um, y'all is gender neutral. So you can say y'all to, you know, the trees outside, the dogs in your neighborhood, boys and girls, whatever. Y'all covers it all, all right? So you can take that home today. That'll be a blessing to you. You just tell them, hey, what's up, y'all? And they'll be like, oh, man, that's cool. And you'll be like, yeah, my pastor taught me some cool stuff, all right? So you just take that home with you. Uh, my name is Pastor Tof, and I'm the assistant pastor here at Abundant Life Church. And like Pastor Charlie said, every now and then when he is, is, is doing some other stuff on the weekend, um, usually spending time with his family, I get the opportunity to come up here and minister to you. And I so love to do it, which is so cool. And uh, so I'm excited this morning for a couple reasons. Number one, just to be up here. You guys are great people and it's exciting to be here. And then uh, number two is I get the opportunity to try to blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because we're, we're continuing our series called Mind Blown. How many of you guys remember two weeks ago, what did we cover? What blew your minds two weeks ago? The stars, the stars. Man, if you weren't here, we learned about how God wrote the gospel in the stars through the Zodiac, which was totally awesome. And if you want more stuff on that, um, either talk to Pastor Charlie or get on the web and look at the sermon or sign up for a CD, we'll, we will bless you for sure. Um, so what did we cover last week? Oh, you guys did the same thing the last service did. <laughs> we need to change messages. We need to do that one again. I'm just kidding. We covered the Bible. We covered the Bible and how awesome the Bible is. You guys weren't here? Yeah, man, I was on. It was a great, great message. We learned about how history supports the Bible, how science supports the Bible, how the Bible is absolutely, absolutely awesome. So today, Pastor Charlie's had two weeks now to blow your mind. And I remember what blowing your mind sounds like, right? It was the that, yeah, yeah, mind's being blown. So today I get my crack at it, which I'm really excited for. So as we begin this morning, I wanna share a little bit about my life with you because part of my mind being blown, you have to have the history of where I've come from, all right? So again, I told you this morning that I grew up in Georgia. I was born and raised in Warner Robins, Georgia. Um, and you'd be like, all right, that's cool. There's a big Air Force base there. I don't know, it's a cool town. Um, it's about kind of like Kokomo. But uh, so that's where I was born and raised, not native to Indiana, um, but I claim to be a Hoosier now. So uh, I've been up here for a little while. And uh, so I was, I was thankfully born to a family with a mom and a dad that lived in the home and they loved God. So I was born in, in church. How many of you guys were born like in church? You know what I'm saying? Like we're there all the time, right? Yeah. Church was just how we did things. Yeah. And so, so that's, my sister came along later. And so the four of us, man, church was it. Like we were there every time the doors opened. And you'll, you'll nod your head when I say the church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday nights <laughs> were non-negotiables, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a culture down South and a culture in churches that, man, you show up when the doors are open. And that was how I was raised. We were there for everything. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. Sometimes I think we turn the lights on and flick them off at the end of the day. Um, we were there so much. So I, I was, and I, as I grew up in church, I became really good at church stuff. I was really good at church things. I went to vacation Bible schools, probably more than I can count. Um, I went to as many youth camps as I could think of. I went on mission trips to different places. I did all that I could do in the church world to, to measure up and to just be a good church person. How many of you can agree with that? You've, you've been there before. You know what that means. Yeah. And man, that was me. That was me. I was good, good at church. To the point where the church that I grew up in, um, we would sing hymns on Sunday. And I got to the point where I didn't even need to open the hymnal because I knew them all. I had them all memorized. So they would say, you know, hey, we're going to sing this, you know, the first, the second, and the fourth verse. Or I don't, We always skipped one. I don't know why. And... Uh, but I had them all memorized and I didn't even need to look at, the, look at the book, man. I had them all. I was a good church person, a good Christian, had it all figured out. I even went to college at a Baptist college. <laughs> yeah, that's about how exciting it was. Yeah, no, it was cool. It was cool. But I did church well. I did church well. So the thing that came along in my walk and in my relationship with Jesus that absolutely blew my mind has to do with that. All right. And so I want to read you a verse, and then we'll get right into it, okay? 
The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they, have, they may have it more what? Abundantly. Abundantly. Guess what church you showed up to today? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm putting it all together, man. Putting it all together. This message wouldn't work down the road because they're not Abundant Life Church, but you are. You are, so we can talk about <laughs> abundant life in that verse, for sure, for sure. Now, one of the coolest things that I realized growing up as a kid, and if you're a church person, you understand too, the biggest thing that, that blew my mind growing up was the fact that Jesus died for who? Yeah, he died for us, man. And because of that, we can have a relationship with him and we get to go to heaven. That's what I was taught as a kid and that's what I grew up with. And I absolutely knew that. I knew that when I gave my heart to Christ, that Jesus came to live inside of me and that I got to go to heaven. The thing that I struggled with a little bit was, was heaven sounded great, but, but what do I do about today? You know, what do I do about tomorrow? What do I do about tomorrow? I need to go to heaven. Let's go to heaven. So I had a perspective in my mind of life consisted of the end result was going to heaven. But in the meantime, man, I had life grabbed on and you just hang on with all you've got. And some days will be awesome. Some days will be awful. And whatever comes, you just hang on. All right. And you'll, you'll make it through. And if you don't make it through, you get to go to heaven and it'll be okay. That was my perspective of life and my walk with Jesus and my, my church mentality that everything would turn out okay in the end. But the here and now, the day that I was living, well, it depended on what came down the pike as to what I had to deal with that day. Good, bad, and ugly. So as we begin to read this verse, it, it changes some things. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I love this verse because it paints the picture very black and white of what is God and what is not God, right? Who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Satan, absolutely, absolutely. And who comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly? Jesus did, yeah. So in your mind today, if you'll begin to separate, God is good, the devil is bad. God is good, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good, that's right. I didn't even plan for that, that was good, you guys. You guys are religious today, Woo. All right, so God is good, don't say it. God is good all the time. The devil is bad all the time, and there's no gray area in between. There's, there's, there is God is good, the devil is bad, don't get the two mixed up. It, that verse is very black and white and very clear. So, but the part that sticks out to me is the part that I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Life. With the way that I grew up, I thought that life meant heaven, that they may have eternal life and have eternal life abundant eternal life. <laughs> I don't know what I thought abundant meant. Lots of eternal life, lots of eternal life. But let me tell you, and this will absolutely blow your mind, what this word means, what this word means. Check this out. That word life means zoe, Z-O-E with some whoop whoop things on it, all right? <laughs> zoe, and zoe in the Greek means redeemed life from the penalty of sin, the God kind of life. Okay, time out. Is your mind being blown? Probably not yet. When I explain it, it will. For me, that changes things now. That verse no longer says, I've come that they may have eternal life and have it more abundantly because that's not what that word means. That word is zoe, life redeemed from the penalty of sin. The God kind of life. So let's put that word in there and let me explain it to you. I have come that they may have zoe, and then they have it more abundantly. Life redeemed from the penalty of sin. And you say, Toph, what does that mean? What does life look like for redeemed from the penalty of sin? And I, I would take you back, we're going way back, to the very, very beginning. And you find a man named Adam and a woman named Eve, and they lived in a world that had no sin in it. They brought sin into the world later, but in the, in the moments before they sinned, they lived in a world with no sin free from the penalty of sin. So you begin to think about what happened in the Garden of Eden, what was going on there, you know? And then I think about, man, some of the needs and the things that I have going on in my life, you know? I, I, I'm, I'm not feeling good, I'm sick. What, what about Adam and Eve? Man, 
they didn't have to worry about sickness. There was no sickness in the Garden of Eden. They were healthy all the time. No Tums, no Tylenol, no, you know, whatever you take for your thing, you know, it was all good. What about, what about being provided for? Food. Hello, they lived in a garden. <laughs> we grow gardens in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. So the food was not an option. I mean, was, was there, there was plenty. There was plenty. They were more than provided for. They had whatever they wanted to eat. What about relationships? Adam and Eve, man, they never argued over who left the toilet seat up. Come on, come on. Oh, you must not live in my house. <laughs> I have two boys that are young, and I am training and equipping them into how to put that seat down and how to aim the right way. <laughs> We're working on it for sure. But Adam and Eve didn't have that problem, man. They had perfect relationship with one another. And think about relationship with God. The Bible says that God walked with them in the cool of the day. They, man, they knew God so intimately. We don't walk with God in the cool of the day, man. God literally walked with them in the cool of the day. They had perfect relationship with him. That's what life looks like, free from sin. Your needs provided for, healthy relationships, good, healthy relationship with God, you're taken care of. That's literally what that word zoe means. And so you say, okay, Toph, that was in that verse, but if it's just in that one verse, like, is it anywhere else in the Bible? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. <laughs> Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Guess what that word life is? Zoe, Zoe life. That's way more than just heaven. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is not just heaven. It is Zoe, abundant life. Life free from the penalty of sin in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That gives you a clue at the end of this. Where does, where does Zoe life come from? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Absolutely. Zoe life comes from Jesus. And you can experience Zoe life and, and have more than just your hope being in heaven. Your hope can be in the here and the now as well. So let's, let's go into one more verse. And this one, man, everybody knows this one. John three sixteen. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Guess what word that is? Zoe, Z-O-E with the whoop, whoop things. That's it, man. Zoe. God sent Jesus into the earth because he loved you so much that he didn't want you to die, but he wanted you to have Zoe life. That's literally what that verse stands for. That's what the meaning of that is. Growing up, man, I thought it was going to heaven. My hope is in heaven. That's what I have to look forward to. But it literally is, my hope is in heaven and what God is doing here on the earth, in me, here and now. So let's get into this word zoe, because it'll absolutely blow your mind when you grab a hold of it. The word zoe, when it, when it is applied to your life and you begin to understand it, does three things, and it changes three things on the inside of you. So the first one, if you're taking notes, man, write this down. The first one is purpose. Your purpose. Why you're doing what you're doing. And I think about growing up, the purpose that I had in the way that I was raised in church was to do a bunch of stuff, was to look like a Christian, you know? I loved God, but my motive was to show up, you know, smile, dress nice. The church that I grew up in, man, you had to tuck your shirt in, you know, that was a big deal. Uh, was to, you know, get plugged in somewhere, serve, be a part of the youth ministry, go on mission trips, do all of these things do all of these things. That was my purpose. But as I begin to experience Zoe life, my purpose begins to change. Those things are included, but the motivation behind them changes. Man, I hope you hear my heart this morning. Let's look at this verse right here. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. I want to highlight and pull out part of this. It says, not according to our what? Works. Not according to our works. Man, I used to be really good at all the works. I used to really be good at the church stuff. But now, you realize, but it says, but according to his own purpose and grace. He has a purpose for me. And there's grace applied to it. 
that I can live a life of zoe, life free from the penalty of sin, because Jesus paid for it. Let's look at one more verse. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Man, if you wanna memorize a good scripture, something to stick down in your mind for a day when things are not going well, that's a good one to memorize. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. There's never a time when God comes along and says, ooh, my bad, I didn't mean to kill that person. Ah, oh, sorry, you know? Or, hey, I'm gonna bring some blessing over here and you think, Oh, God, why did you do that? that is, I can't handle the blessing. You know, too much, too much. There's never a time when that happens. Because when God brings his blessing, there's no sorrow that's added with it. There's no sorrow that's added with it. Zoe life, man, there is no, that is a blessing and there's no sorrow that's added with it, for sure. And then we look at this verse right here. Philippians 3.10 says, For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Man, that should be the desire of our heart, to more deeply, deeply and intimately connect with Jesus, to grow in him, to figure that out, man, to walk with him, our determined purpose. Zoe life will change the purpose in your life. It'll move from just doing stuff to having a relationship with God. Because there's blessing attached to relationship with God and there's no sorrow with it. Yeah. The second thing that I think changes, we have purpose first. The second thing is this word right here, power. Power changes. And let's look at this verse and then we'll go into something else. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Man, when you begin to realize that, you have power that comes into your life because I believe this statement to be true. Power is attached to identity. Now, my example for that is this. Check this out. And I messed up last service, all right, y'all? Because I ask, I said, let's take a high school kid, all right? High school young man, just getting ready to graduate. High schoolers, you know, they, they're figuring life out. You know, they may tell you that they've got it all figured out. And if you're a high schooler in here, I'm gonna offend you and I'm sorry. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna do my best not to. But uh, they're figuring life out. You know, they would say that they've got it all figured out and it's all good. But, you know, when you eat McDonald's for every meal and you stay up all night and you do burnouts in the parking lot, like something is, is a little off, you know what I'm saying? That was a good time to laugh. That's funny. We all used to be there. So you take a high school kid and you take him and I need a branch of the military. Marines. Marines. Thank you. Thank you. This is where, okay, time out. Let me jump out of my message and tell you this, okay? Last service, I say, and this is going smooth all weekend. I'm not having any problems. Need a branch of the military. Saturday night, army. First service, Marines. Guess what the next service picked, y'all? Coast Guard. Wasn't ready for that one, all right? I don't know a whole lot about the Coast Guard. And in my analogy, it didn't quite fit. So thank you for Marines. I appreciate it. I'll pay you later. Pay you later. Marines works. Okay, so we have a high school kid figuring life out. Not a very strong identity. It's still figuring out who he is. Now he signs up to be a Marine. And even in the midst of before he becomes a Marine, he signed up and he's headed to basic training and he's headed to be, become a Marine. His identity is beginning to change and you can see it in him. And you talk to him like, hey, who are you? Tell me who you are. And he's like, oh man, I'm, 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 this is who I am now, but I'm, I'm gonna be a Marine and you better watch out. And then he goes through basic training and he gets trained and equipped to be a part of the Marines for the United States. And then you talk to him after that. And again, we're talking about identity and you see a young man whose shoulders are back, you know? And he's got confidence in his face. And you come up to him and you're like, hey, tell me who you are. And he's like, man, I'm a Marine. He said, and you don't want to mess with this because if you mess with this, all this behind me gets released and bad things happen to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Identity has changed now. He has power. Not because of necessarily who he is, but who he's connected to. He, he now has power and an, and an identity that, that those two go together. It's the same way with you and Jesus. When your identity is found in Jesus, 
You represent him. And it's, hey, let me tell you about me, but look, I'm gonna hold this back or it'll come and sick you, man. Because Jesus is a bad dude and he will change your life forever. You know what I mean? So don't mess with me. Your identity is directly tied to power, for sure. So let's look at this. Romans 8, 11 says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. What does that verse mean? Man, the Holy Spirit lives deep down on the inside of you if you believe in, in Christ. And because of that, you now have an identity and you now have power to do things. I didn't know that before. I grew up in, a, in, in, a, in all of my beliefs and all of my thinking where I didn't know that I had power. I was attached to Christ, but I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what that meant. And you, as a believer, living Zoe life, you have power and the authority because the Holy Spirit lives deep down on the inside of you to change what's going on around you, to change your circumstances, to change things that are not right, to change things that the Bible says are supposed to be this way. You now have power. You now represent something bigger than yourself, just like the, the kid being a Marine, not the Coast Guard. <laughs> I love the Coast Guard. I don't, there's only one guy in our church that I think is from the Coast Guard, and he was the guy that yelled out, Coast Guard. Yeah, I'm like, man... All right, can you see how that didn't work out quite well with the Coast Guard, you know? Watch out or I'll unleash, you know, uh, life-saving devices on you. <laughs> I don't know, drown you in the ocean. <laughs> so you have, you have purpose, Zoe life brings new purpose. Zoe life brings power, and ultimately Zoe life brings victory in your life. And those are the things that it changes, man. Absolutely, let's look at this verse right here. It says Romans eight thirty one. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, man, who can be against us? That is a good verse. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Man, the first part of that, whoop, the first part of that, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's a strong identity. That's a strong identity. I know and I'm anchored to where I've come from and who is for me. And because of that, I can walk with new purpose and I have some power. And ultimately, man, I'm gonna win. But here's the kicker, it's not me that's winning. It's not me really that's doing anything. It's Jesus that's doing everything. He did everything. Now, if you've been here for very long, you have ingrained and you probably wake up in the middle of the night saying, because we learned it in the, in the grace series, you know, that Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Yeah, you guys got it, man. You guys got it. Absolutely. We, we said that five bajillion times in that grace series. Why do we have grace? Because Jesus died 2,000 years ago on the cross. Jesus died 2,000 years ago on the cross. Man, that's absolutely true. And it applies way more than just for grace. You have authority. You have power. You have victory because Jesus died when? 2,000 years ago on the cross. When that sinks in, things change. Things change for sure. Look at this verse. 1 John 5, 4 says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. All right, we're gonna pause there for a second. Who's born of God? Man, you ought to raise your hand if you're a believer. Absolutely, absolutely. You are born of God and therefore you can overcome the world. That's what that verse says. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Our faith. Our faith. That's the key to this whole thing. It's not what I do. And it's not what I can work to do. And it's not showing up to church all the time. And it's not volunteering for every ministry going on in the church. And it's not signing up for every life group that Abundant Life Church has. It's got to do with my faith. It's got to do with my faith. It's got to do with, with my works now being changed because I have a relationship with God. And out of that relationship now, now I wanna go do some stuff because I love God first. My faith is in him. My faith is in him, and that's where Zoe life comes in. More than just going to heaven. Man, God wants you to be involved in your day-to-day. -day. But it's not just be involved in your day-to-day. -day. It's be a blessing to your day-to-day. -day. Absolutely, absolutely. I thought about this this week, and I think this is good. We should stand in a place of victory. We are implementing the victory that Jesus has provided for us. Man, that's a good word. How many of you guys have ever played King of the Hill? If you lived in Indiana, you shouldn't raise your hand because Indiana's flat, just saying. 
There's no hills in Indiana. King of the little, you know, whoop, little mound or something. I don't know. Anyway, down in Georgia, we have elevation. Things go up and down, you know. Um, things are not like cornfields. Roads are nice and crisp and whoop, whoop. Um, down in Georgia, man, you drive around stuff. You know, there's no east, west, north, south. It's, hey, turn by the big stump and then, you know, at that gas station, you know, hang a UE and whatever, because that's, that's how everything is down there. It's kind of chaotic. Um, but when I was a kid, man, we used to play King of the Hill. And the objective for King of the Hill, in case you've never played, you can go home and play it today maybe, and uh, is somebody's on top of the mountain or the hill or whatever, and the objective is to knock that person off and you be on top right? And if you played in my neighborhood where I grew up, it was to knock the person on top off hard so they didn't want to get back up on the hill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're a bunch of dudes. It's okay. And uh, so that was the goal. The goal was to be on top of that mountain, that hill, and to own and, and have dominion over it. My man, well, let me tell you, you as a believer, you were on top of the hill, not because you climbed up the hill, but because somebody put you on top of the hill. Who put you on top of the hill? Jesus, Jesus. And why do you get to be on top of the hill? Because Jesus died when? Yes. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So you stand in a place of victory already. You don't have to strive for victory. You don't have to try to be victorious. You don't have to work at it, man. You are victorious because of who he is, not because of what you've done. You get involved and jack things up. When you believe in Jesus, when you have faith in him, you are on top of the hill and you, you establish dominion. And then your job is not to go attack stuff. Your job is to stay and settle. You can just no, leave off of it if you come up here. But if you come up here, leave off of it if you come up here. Leave off of it if you come up here. But if you come up here, you know, you stand in a place of victory. You stand in a place of victory. Abundant life. So cool. So I definitely think this. Abundant life, Zoe life, you live with a purpose, walk in power, and you stand in victory. Man, absolutely. And I want to tell you the balance to this, because that all sounds awesome. And it sounds like pie in the sky, everything will work out and it'll be perfect. And, you know, it's great. Um, and I'll tell you, man, that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Oh, come on. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. God is good all the time, man, for sure. But... Sometimes things don't always work out perfectly because how many of you know that walking with God and building a relationship with God is a process? Man, absolutely, absolutely. Every day, each and every day, we have an opportunity to learn and to grow. In my family, man, when we talk about, you know, the Bible, what's God teaching you? I'll talk with Samantha, you know, that, that phrase, learning and growing, comes up probably in every conversation, you know, because sometimes we hit things and we do things well. Sometimes we, we miss them, man. And I'll be like, man, Samantha, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just learning and growing, you know, figuring it out. God's patient with me. Yeah. So learning and growing. So not everything in your world will be perfect just like that because you say, hey, I, today I'm going to leave. I'm walking in Zoe life and that's it, period. Okay, well, things don't change just like that. It's, there's a process of learning and growing. There's a process of walking through some things with God. There's a process of maybe some days are awesome. Maybe some days are tough. How many of you have ever had a week? Yeah, yeah, you don't, have to be, you don't have to be churchy in here. Just be real. A week, man, a week. Like today's Sunday, and I don't know what happened this past week, but I'm glad today is Sunday and Monday is coming. You know what I'm saying? Last week is done, which is cool. My family, man, this week, we have had one of those. We've had stuff that happened this week that never happens ever. Like crazy stuff, stuff that doesn't even make sense. And one of, the, one of the bummer things that happened this week is everybody in my family, man, we all got sick. And I don't know if you have kids or not, but the way that it works when you have kids is one of the kids, I've got three, so I have three options. One of them gets, catches something, right? And they bring it home and then they share it with everybody, which is a huge not blessing to your life, right? So, so the sickness that we suffered from this week, um, and this is, the, this is the kindest way I can say it, is we, uh, we saw our food twice. Ah, I know, I know. It was, it, how you just said that is how I felt. Um, it was bad. So we, we all have went through this week of not feeling good, and, and we've all taken turns. And in fact, my daughter today is the last one in our family that has not felt well. And so she's at home today with my wife and uh, getting better and healing up and all that stuff, so... 
Um, but it was funny this week because we've had all kinds of nutty, crazy things happen like that. Super busy, stressed, not feeling good, all that kind of stuff. And then, and then I'm, I'm thinking about, crap, Tove, you're preaching on abundant life this weekend, man. And this week has not been abundant life. Like, what are you doing? You know? And I have to think like, oh, God, what, what is the deal? What is the deal? And I'll tell you, this is, this, man, this will be a blessing to you. You're after Zoe life as a believer, but it doesn't happen overnight. And the key to having Zoe life in your life is all about your perspective. It's all about your perspective. It's all about what you choose to set your eyes on. So this week has been nutty and crazy in my family. We've taken turns not feeling well. We've taken turns with all kinds of stuff, but I've never lost my perspective and what I have my eyes fixed on. When, when, you, when, when life deals you all kinds of crazy stuff, you have a choice to try to deal with all of that on your own, or you can set your eyes on Jesus. Man, the Bible says the author and perfecter of your faith. That's a different perspective. When you set your eyes on him, that brings the opportunity to walk in Zoe life. Now it's not, oh, I feel bad, I'm sick, I need to take this medicine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be out for like a week, you know. Um, this stuff probably killed the last family that it got a hold of, but it's not killing us, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a survivor though. <laughs> um, it, it's not that, it's, it's man, I may not feel good today, but let me tell you about my tomorrow. Because this word, what I have my focus, what my perspective is on, is absolutely Zoe life. It's absolutely what Jesus paid for. And it's absolutely what I'm gonna anchor myself to. So I know that the word says, by his stripes, I'm healed. Jesus paid for my healing 2,000 years ago on the cross. <laughs> That'll come up a lot. 2,000 years ago on the cross. And so that's what I'm gonna choose to believe, not I don't feel good. I know that God has healed me already. And I just need to, I need to walk in it, man. I need to keep my perspective locked onto him. And then the things around me change. I get healthy, I get better because I've had the opportunity to put my faith in what Jesus has done. That's when you will truly experience Zoe life. When your perspective, man, is locked in on Jesus. When it's locked in on Jesus and you won't move. I thought about this week to, to have healthy, strong Christians. You know, it takes some faith, it takes some word, and man, it takes some stubbornness. And usually we think of stubbornness as like, oh, that's a bad thing. Man, I, I, th I think of the idea of just like an alligator chomping on something, man, and it won't open its jaws and let go. That's what you have to do with the word of God. You gotta chomp down on that thing and not let go of it until you see it produce what it says it'll produce in your life. Yeah. So I wanna say two things that are super important to having Zoe life, man. And I think the Bible, the Bible says them, and, and I just think they're awesome. So the first thing for you to have Zoe life, because it would do me, it would do you a huge injustice if I said, hey, you know, Zoe life, awesome. Go, go get it. And you would say, all right, but, but what do I do? Like, what does that look like? You know, I would like Zoe life. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna walk in Zoe life, life redeemed from the penalty of sin, but man, how do I do that? Well, I think it's encapsulated in two things. Number one, I think it's loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, everything you've got. And number two, I think it's loving your neighbor as yourself. Now you'd be like, hey, man, Jesus said that. He did. He did. I'm just telling you what he said. I'm just telling you what he said. But there are keys inside, inside that thing, man, that'll unlock life for you. Number one, I think it's, it's having a healthy relationship with God. And what does that look like? As I grew up in church, my relationship with God was, was pretty structured. And I thought that it needed to look a certain way. I had the idea that I wouldn't bother God with some things, you know? Or I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell God about this because, oh man, he's big. And why, why would he care about, you know, my math test? Or why would he care about, you know, that whatever? Um, but having, having a relationship with God starts by you being as real as you can be. God can handle it. I promise you. I promise you he can handle it. So now, relationship with God looks like, to me, it's almost like talking to my wife without the nagging. <laughs> just, just kidding, just kidding. She's not here, we'll be all right. You guys don't tell her that I said that though, okay? She doesn't nag me that much. Um, somebody said, wow. <laughs> you know, I may need to ride home, I don't know. Um, but it's being, as real, it's being as real with God as it is me talking to Samantha. 
You know, I tell Samantha about the good days that I have. Man, Samantha, I can't believe this happened to me. This is awesome. And she's usually like, Tove, calm down. <laughs> you're, you're too excited, you know. Or it's, it's days where it's just like, man, man, it seems like nothing's going right. This is hard, you know. Those are the same conversations I have with God. God, thank you so much for blessing this. Thank you so much for providing for this. Thank you so much that this happened. Man, God, you are awesome. You're the only one that could do that. Or it's, man, God, this is, this is tough. God, I need you to show up in this because I, I can't do this on my own. I need you. I need you to have a real relationship with God, to be as, as gut honest as you can. It's in that that God will minister into your heart, man, and he'll prove himself faithful and you will see him move like he's never moved before. And then it's in relationships with other people because the awesome thing about God is what he does on the inside of you can't help but bubble out and spill out and, and, and you can't catch it all. It leaks out of you because you, as you walk with God, look very different than the world. And people are used to seeing how the world runs things, how things work. You know, somebody doesn't feel good, they miss work for a week, okay? You don't feel good, you miss work for a, a, day? a day? Why are you back here, you know, your coworker would say. What's the deal, man? I thought you, I thought you had the, you know, the whatevers. I'm like, man, no, I didn't feel good yesterday. But, man, I absolutely believe that Jesus healed me. And so I'm here today. And I'm walking this thing out, learning and growing. I'm learning and growing. Okay, well, tell me about that, because that's, that's different than what I'm used to seeing. Or, you know, everybody around me, man, has these huge needs, and they're not making ends meet, and they can't pay their bills, and things are super tight, but we work the same job, and you, you can pay all yours. What's going on? You selling something on the side? Like, what's the deal? You know? What, what's, you got a side job? What, what's going on? Man, let me tell you about how God has provided for me. You'll stand out to people, and it gives you awesome opportunities to share. They'll ask the questions. All you need to do is answer. It's not you beating them down with, oh, let me tell you about God. It's, hey, you just watch the way that I live out of authentic, real relationship with Jesus. And then you can come ask me about what's going on because I'm more than happy to share it with you. And it'll bring life to you too. Zoe life. Eternity is in heaven, but God wants to change your here and now. Man, absolutely. I think about the perfect example for this is, 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 is this story. I think about when um, when, it's, 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 when it snows, and snow, snow is coming, I don't know if you love snow or hate snow, whatever, I'm kind of in the middle. To be honest, and this doesn't make any sense at all, but if it could be like 75 in snow, the game up for that. I don't know how that would work, maybe in heaven, but I don't like the cold, but I'm cool with the snow, because in Georgia, it never snows. Ne ne never. And, well, and if it does, people down there like crash into stuff, and they're nutty with it, so whatever. <laughs> So when it's, it's going to snow, two, three, four, five, six months, and that we'll probably get a big snow. You know, we usually get a one or two of those sometime. And so it, I've got three kids, man, and we like to play in the snow. It's fun. We have a good time outside for a little while. And uh, so usually what happens is we all get geared up and dressed up and we're ready to go. And the first person out the door is usually me. And as we begin to play in the front yard, I begin to take steps in the front yard with my boots. You know, I'm walking through, making sure I don't fall. And I'm walking through and making a path in the snow and we're having fun. And then my kids come out of the door and they have two choices. They have number one, they can walk in the steps that I walked in or number two is they can just, just plow it through, man, go for it. And usually they take number two and they run and they, they, they get snow in places that it's bad to get snow and they're cold, and they, but we have a good time. A lot of times, man, we live life like that. We live life like that. We live life where, you know, life's coming and man, I'm just gonna plow through the snow and I may get some life in places that I don't wanna get it, but I'll be all right and I'll just keep going. And you know, part of it may be easy, part of it may be hard, and, and it, but I'll, I'll, I'll just hang on, I'll be all right. But I'm telling you that Zoe life, man, hear, hear me this morning. Zoe life is Jesus coming like I do with my kids before. It's Jesus coming and walking through some life crunching it down, making a path for you. And now you come and you have two choices. You can run through life and, and, and just do the best you can, make it as far as you can. Or you have the choice to walk where Jesus walked in his footsteps and figure out what does he say about this footstep? Okay, well, I'm gonna come over here and walk in this. Walking in, in, in the snow in my footsteps for my kids is way easier than them plowing their own path. They wear themselves out and they'll get tired. But if they go where I went, 
I'll make a way for them, and it's easy. It's the same way in your Christian walk, man. Jesus has been through life. He conquered life, took care of it for you. You have a choice today to walk where he walked or to blaze your own trail, to blaze your own trail. And if you'll walk where he walked, that's where you experience Zoe life because he's taking care of sickness and disease. He paid a price for that on the cross 2,000 years ago. He took care of you not having enough finances and resources and things like that. He took care of that 2,000 years ago. He took care of you having broken relationships. You can plow through life, man, but he took care of that. There's a footstep that you can walk in that absolutely has taken care of that, but you need to find it by getting into the word of God and figuring out, okay, God, this is where I, this is, I need a footstep here. <laughs> where, where, where do I go? Where do I go? And that word will absolutely tell you exactly where to go. And then you put your faith on it and you can walk in it and you experience Zoe life. Man, that's good. That's good.